Hi and welcome to my retouching um, video I've just put together here for you from a recent photo from the Custom Tattoo magazine. So today I want to run through just my process of how I would retouch a, an image. So first of all I create a new layer and just grab a colour that's quite bright that I can go through and just mark the things that I want to retouch in the video. So an obvious one here, just a little spot from the sensor that I want to get rid of. Uh, then my floor marker, just fix up the ripples in the backdrop. Uh, and obviously my big softbox here in the corner. Uh, go through and we'll get rid of all of those sorts of things. We'll start getting into some sort of smaller details of uh, the skin, any marks that um, don't really make um, any benefit to the image. So we'll go through and get rid of those. Uh, so I'll just keep that layer there so I can turn it off and look at it again later on. We get into two layers, so I always start with a background fixes layer and I also create a skin fixes layer at the same time, just two standard layers. Um, so I click on my background fixes and we'll go through some processes on how to get rid of them. J, the, uh, J on the keyboard is a spot healing tool it'll just clean up an area like that. Uh, it doesn't work quite as well with edges so this one um, I just create a nice big brush and uh, hit the B for uh, brush tool and I'll just sample spots uh, close to the area that I'm removing and I'll get rid of those uh, just by painting over the background. There's not any detail in these areas so it's, uh, brush tool is a good tool to use in this situation. I'll just um, go through and just feather that in just to make it blend a little bit better uh, and as you'll see my flow is quite low on my uh, uh, Wacom tablet just to ease that transition when I'm using the brush tool and uh, we'll choose another technique for down the bottom here just want to get rid of a few of these obvious issues um, I actually use a uh, colors uh, selection tool so we uh, don't have to make such a, an accurate selection okay so just still finishing off some of the uh, sort of more major um, shadows on from course from the uh, ripples in the background backdrop that I was using so now I'll just go up and select color range and this is where I can select the majority of that background white color out just hit the add eyedropper there to add in some more of the, the grey tones of the backdrop. So this is giving me quite a good selection that I can use where I can brush over really quickly and not worry too much about getting uh, that background colour on the surfboard and on her legs. So much quicker way to work, um, obviously if you can use the tools to your benefit it makes your job a lot quicker so just making sure I've got my flow set right to uh, just give me a nice soft transition for these shadows so they were made by a big uh, umbrella an 84 um, inch umbrella so it gives nice soft shadows so I'm just trying to mimic that just through my brush size uh, obviously closer to the board it's going to be a harder uh, shadow and as you get further away it feathers out more and more so just trying to blend that in and make it look realistic uh, now I realized I made a mistake when uh, editing this um, I could have made my job a lot easier if I took out that black marker uh, in my shot uh, when I was doing the background fixes um, but I'll show you another technique that's a little slower but in a pinch you can use that as well to to get rid of uh, blemishes and make uh, shadows blend in easier so uh, I'll just do a little bit of blending and then I'll remove this um, as you can see now I've uh, taken away that selection just by hitting uh, command D and now I'll go through and I think I just did a spot healing for this and uh, go through just use the brush tool again just to blend now because I'm on a, using a new layer I can just brush straight over 
the surfboard and on her feet and not be too worried about it. I can come back and just use a masking layer and make a finer selection just to bring that board back in and also bring her, her toe back in. So right now I'll just start to blend that again and uh, as you'll see just not worrying too much about going over her foot at the moment. Uh, it's more important to get a nice looking blend and then I'll bring the foot back. So as I said before, just trying to get a darker and a harsher line closer to the subject where the shadow would naturally be a harsher um, edge to it and fading away to a, a softer shadow towards the front edge of the board there. So you can see, not too concerned about going over the board. Just getting that blending nicely. And as you can see, I'm sampling colors all the time, just using um, the command key just to grab a selection uh, and trying to get that nice smooth blend. Okay, so now I've got a uh, mask on the background and I'm just using black to paint uh, away where I've used the blending uh, method. So, and again, this is a lot slower method and it's not as accurate as what a color selection will do, but in a pinch, uh, it will definitely do the job. So just trying to make a nice even selection and even use the pen tool to make it more accurate. And uh, on the foot here, just going through, neatening up, making it a much uh, nicer contrast with the foot against the background. Really make it pop out. Cleaning up that toe. And as you can see, I'm using uh, Option and Command, and I can drag up and down to change the uh, the harsh uh, harshness of the brush so I can have a much more um, definite edge especially for if you're using the toe. Okay so I uh, just realized I had two masks on the background I can just get rid of that one I wasn't using and now we move into the skin um, fixes so this is where I'll go through and just clean up anything obvious that's on um, on the skin layer. So there's just a few minor things. Um, she had makeup done at the convention, so it was quite a good job at concealing some things, but um, you obviously get some blemishes that uh, can easily be taken out in retouching uh, in post. So just going through using the J tool here because it keeps that skin texture where I'm sampling from. Um, so again, just using the command um, oh, uh, command key, sorry, just to grab a sample and then retouch that. So just when you're going through, make sure you're selecting skin texture that's like the area that you're trying to fix up. Just trying to remove the harshness of that uh, little um, shadow there and remove a couple little wrinkles that um, I don't think add to the image. And I'll also start to try and blend some of the uh, shadows and toning around uh, the skin layer. So not going all out because I'll actually do some um, uh, skin blending later on, so textures and tone. But this is just a little one that I can fix up. Minor little changes, um, probably harsh, harsher changes in light. Uh, as you can see, just a little blemish there that I easily remove with the spot healing tool. Um, it's starting to look pretty good. I'll just work my way through the image. Don't want to be zoomed in incredibly tight because uh, you'll tend to find that you uh, will go over a lot of larger areas you just don't see if you zoomed in too far. So a couple more little blemishes, just mainly in, in tone that I'm um, changing there. 
as you can see, like a little uh, wrinkle there. And just easily remove that. And a bigger couple of spots there. Easy to remove. Just a fraggle there that I don't think uh, adds to the image. I'll remove it as well. And uh, I'll go through. This will be uh, dealt with a little bit later on. Um, and again, as I said before, with the spot healing tool, it doesn't handle edges correctly. So against that surfboard there, we'll have to treat that a different way. So I'll come back to that. Uh, and again, I think this is just from a bikini line. Just changes the tone a little bit. So um, just spot around there a little bit. Working down the body again. And it's not too bad in there, so I'll keep going. Come down to the leg, and again, there's a couple of little spots that we'll address down there. So, a couple of freckles that we'll remove. And as you can see, I zoomed out, so you can really start to see some of the um, bigger blemishes uh, that you would have probably not noticed before when you're zoomed in at a um, much higher level. So again, just working down the body. A couple of little blemishes just in there on the back leg. I'll remove. Again, just continuing to find any inconsistencies in the, the tone and uh, the lines that you can see from the reflections off the modifier, light modifier. So you just want to create a nice even um, reflection on a lot of this stuff. So we'll come back and treat a lot of that in the frequency separation layer, which we'll look at next. But, uh, just as you see, you're just finishing off some uh, just little inconsistencies in the skin tone. This is all just with the spot healing brush. So. Uh, just sampling an area of texture and, uh, and using that to blend any areas I don't like. So sometimes just around differences in uh, like the ankle just there, you'll have a really dark area. Just be careful when you're going up around the edges of that, you might get some unusual effects of the spot healing brush. Again, just using the uh, command and option and uh, dragging with the pen, pen tool, uh, that's changing my brush size, it's a nice quick and easy way to modify and keep the flow going. So just going over the back, um, back up the body now, just treating the hand which I didn't treat before. Not too much in the tattoo area that um, I'm bothered doing there. Okay, so back to this area here. Uh, that we're going to treat differently. So I'm going to use a clone stamp tool. Um, so I've got a bit of the board there that I can sample from. So just using S on the keyboard for the clone stamp tool. And I'm using the preview just to line up the board so I get that line right. And as you can see, I'm a sample from a bit too light an area on the skin there, so it looked uh, a bit unrealistic. So just trying another area of the skin now flow down a lot so it's just gonna just blend that edge in and really what I'm looking for is just that edge there the rest I can just get rid of um, just here I've used a clone tool and I'll start to use a spot healing tool again just to blend that a little bit better so just a little bit more of the clone tool just to try and get a bit more of an effect a blended effect this is the spot healing now so it's looking much nicer we zoomed in about 200%, so once you go back, you really don't notice a lot of this stuff. It's just uh, very subtle, and that's what you're really looking for when you're uh, retouching, just very subtle changes. Always remember just to save your work every now and again. It's just uh, Command S is a short uh, keyboard shortcut to save your work. So uh, worst thing you can do is retouch uh, an image for a couple of hours and then if something crashes on your computer it's not a good feeling okay so I've just used an action uh, just to save myself some time to create a frequency separation layer so there's a lot of tutorials on the web that you can look at on how frequency separation works um, 
but basically you take the detail part of the image, put it in the above layer, and you've got a blurred layer below, and I've created a skin layer in between which I can then do my blending with, so it gives very realistic results. So, and as you can see here, I'm just doing a uh, color range, which is allowing me to get everything except for the skin. So what I'll do is invert that selection then. So when I'm blending the skin, I'm, I'll actually be painting on skin, uh, more so painting on color tones um, to give me an even look. And I know when I'm brushing along, I won't be getting any of the surfboard, I won't be getting any of the clothing. Um, it will just be applied on the skin color. So again, it makes it a lot quicker uh, and more realistic editing results. So again, I'm just trying to get the right um, uh, selection here. You can use your fuzziness slider to uh, get more accurate results. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit just to expand that range of what it's selecting. And just selecting the blues and the silvers out on the board here. So as you can see, I'm getting a nice uh, black area where her skin tones are. So okay to that selection. And I'll hit the mask button. That gives me a nice mask, but um, I'll have to invert that. There we go, just the uh, command I. And now I can go over and um, be confident that when I'm brushing over the skin, it's only getting the areas where I want it to affect. Just make sure you do press on your uh, actual layer there instead of being on the mask. Uh, otherwise you'll be brushing away and wondering why nothing's happening. Okay, so this is just using the these color picker tool. And usually I tend to start with a lighter area and work into the shadows. I just had my flow way too high here. It's making too big a change to the area. So tend to work one way or the other, working in the shadows coming out to your highlights or your highlights going back in. And uh, just very um, nice big long strokes. You want those nice long even um, legs. So just working my way around. And again, I'm, I've zoomed out a fair bit here, so it's not a, you're not trying to be very precise here and you really want uh, the overall look to see how, it's, how the image is, is being affected. If you zoomed in really close, you're not getting a, a good representation. And you can really define one area very nicely, but then zoom out and realize you've uh, only done that to half a, a leg or something, and it's, uh, it'll take a lot of work to try and blend the other half then. So again, just working out at a, uh, a nice uh, zoom level. This, I'm just working on the foot here to blend the, the tones. Uh, so I think this model's had a, a tan, but uh, it's obviously missed the feet a little bit. So just trying to blend that in uh, to the feet to look a bit more natural as well. And I'll typically go over the kneecap area just to lighten some of those shadows in, in around the kneecap. Um, you don't, don't need it to look that uh, contrasty with the colors there. Just keep working along the leg, just blending it in. And you'll see here through the ankle, just blending that colour. Starting to look a bit more natural. As you can see, I'm using a brush, I'm really not being accurate with it um, because I've already made those selections to allow me to only affect the skin tones area. And I know it's not affecting the bikini or the backdrop. This can be a time-consuming uh, process, but you do get better and much quicker at it. So we're just working up the body now. So just having a look at how that changes. Again, it's only subtle, but it really does make all the difference for an image. Just a little bit more of that highlight running down the leg there. really change the look of an image just by uh, changing the shadows. So uh, 
you just got to be careful that you don't go too far on a lot of this. Try and keep it natural. You can see a little bit of a darker, uh, I'm not sure if it's from the tan, uh, a darker area just around the armpit there. So I'm just trying to blend some of the lighter colours around the area to uh, just make it a smoother transition. So I'm just trying to keep in mind natural curves of the body. So you always want to be running with them rather than anything against. So, and again, this is just something you'll pick up over time. It's a little bit of the neck area there as well, just to give a little bit more of a smoother appearance between that sort of light and dark area there. Work a little bit more down just in the, the stomach area uh, because there were some differences in the colour tone. One good way to really look at differences in colour tone is to apply a black and white layer. Uh, when you remove the colour information you can really see where there are changes in colour tone. So uh, I'll often do that, I'll just change the image to pure black and white uh, and just have that as a layer that you can turn on and off and really see where those areas do change um, and you do need to blend them more. So it's starting to look a lot better now. Just fix up around that area where we were uh, um, clone stamping before. Just making sure it all looks nice and natural. So again, these are all very subtle little changes. I like to keep my flow very, very low. Especially around the face here, we can uh, really change the appearance of a person. So uh, it's getting to know where the cheekbones are uh, and the natural lines of the face to uh, just make it as natural a look as possible. So you'll see I'll run along the jawline, run along the front of the chin, um, just keeping nice big long sweeps. And paying particular attention with her cheek colour, keeping that um, blended out nicely as well. Uh, there is a highlight from the um, light modifier I was using, the umbrella. So I'll tend to blend that out a little bit more into the cheek area so it's not such a, a hot spot um, of light on the face. Just working on that little line before where we did use the spot healing tool. But now with the frequency separation you can get that to look a lot smoother. So I start to work on the cheek now, I tend to pick a little bit uh, in that lighter area and blend it out um, rather than sort of blending a darker colour back in. Uh, I find that just tends to give a nicer appearance. And along with the forehead I'll start from the lighter side and work to the darker side. Generally brightens the area a little bit, um, which in this image looks good, it brings a little bit more detail in. Okay, so zooming out, just checking the differences there. And again, at this zoom level, you're probably not noticing too much, um, but if you were preparing this for print for a magazine, or uh, you are inspecting in a lot closer level, uh, it really does make all the difference. I've just added a curves adjustment here, and I'm going to actually uh, open up the shadows a little bit. So I'm gonna use apply image, and I've got it on merged uh, and multiply and I hit the invert so that actually brings up the shadows. So and it applies a mask automatically so you can see the difference. So what I'll do is actually do command G to put that into a group. And now that allows me to put a mask on it and apply this only where I want it. So I'll invert that uh, and just make sure it's labeled. So um, now change to painting with white on the mask so that will reveal okay and again very low flow just going to open up those shadows just slightly so just along the board there just so i can see a little bit more of her face that's really where we want the attention to be so 
a little bit down the surfboard and the back of the leg there as well, brighten things up. Again, as you'll see, this is all very, very subtle stuff, but once we get to the end and actually have a look at the before and after, you'll see it's, it's quite dramatic. Top of the surfboard there too, just want to highlight the hand. So again, you can see it's really brightened up that area. Okay, so again to my actions that I've created, so auto levels, this is just changing the uh, contrast a little bit. So uh, with shadows, highlights, um, it's something I'll, I'll go through in a, another video, uh, but it really does give you a big impact on your images. So even with just that, going through and doing that to your images uh, can really make you stand out. Selective colour tone, uh, just doing a little bit of colouring and um, effects to my images, this is what I like to do. So uh, my desaturate, I tend to uh, ramp up, it's a black and white layer, and I really ramp up the reds and yellows, which is in the human skin, and then I'll bring that right back in opacity, so it just gives a little bit more of a desaturated look to the image. This is the sharpen technique that I'm doing at the moment. So this is a detail sharpen. I like to use the high pass filter uh, and then I'll go through, create, uh, like what we did before, a new group. And uh, that allows me to then go in and just paint in the areas where I actually want that detail. So as you can see here with the clothing, it's uh, really good with the seams to really give a lot more detail and obviously in with the eyes I'll go through and just very roughly go the eyelashes and the eyes to really draw your attention in quickly over the lips um, the eyebrows and I'll often do a part of the hair as well uh, again quite quick here it's, uh, again none of this should be very fine detail it's uh, you've done all the work in your masks and the effects that you've done, you should be able to just paint very quickly. Okay, and this, I'm just doing a little bit more impact to the eyes. So this is global to the image, but we will create a mask which will just affect the eyes, the, uh, the eye colour. So I think she's got a bit of a hazel, greeny sort of hazel eyes. So this is why I'm picking blues and the greens uh, and pulling out the reds a little bit. Which I think she might have more of a bluey greeny sort of eye. Okay, and then I've gone back to the RGB channel just to brighten the, all the uh, layers at once. So I've done an invert on that layer now. I'll bring my brush size down. Just check my flow that I'm not affecting too much at once. And just painting around the, the iris there. And again, I, I, it's very obvious when you see edited images that the colour is just unnatural. So uh, you've got to be very subtle on this type of stuff. So, uh, and just double clicked on the beside the curves two there to bring up the layer styles and the blending options. So I'll uh, use the, I believe it's command and on those slider bars to split them and that just blends it much more evenly. So as you can see there's a subtle change there just in the colour. I'm always making sure I label my layers so I know what they are and I can easily come back and make changes if I need to. So just zooming out again to just check how it looks. Now I'll do a bit of a dodge and burn. Uh, so again, just using the curves. So brightening the image up. Nothing too fancy, I'm not being very accurate here. Uh, I'll invert the layer. I'll change it to luminosity because it's not changing the saturation of your colors then. Um, it can tend to make your images look dirty, especially in a skin tone. So you need to be careful of that, so make sure you just change your uh, uh, layer options, or your blending option to luminosity. Okay, so just, uh, I'm grabbing the mask that I used, so just double click on that, or actually I think it's command click on the layer mask. That makes it into a selection. And I'm actually going to group 
my lighten and darken layers, uh, my dodge and burns, uh, and create a group and apply the mask. And it applies the selection that you had. So, dodge and burn. Okay, now I can go through and just confidently paint in there, knowing that I'm not going to affect the color. Uh, oh, sorry, the uh, lightness or darkness values of the background or any of the other objects that are in the image. So for this example, it'd be the surf, surfboard. So it's all about not having to be very accurate. Uh, you can just go through and just, like a painter, just be uh, go through and make nice brush strokes, not having to be zoomed right in and making very detailed selections and, and uh, accurate painting strokes. So go through here and give the lips a little bit of a darken. It makes them look a lot more full. Um, so run around the edge of the lips again, just making sure a very low flow it can look very unnatural quickly. Tend to blend in a little bit more where the uh, creases of the lips go. So again, this is on my darken. So it's a black mask. So I'm painting with white. Just going over all the areas where I just want a little bit more impact. So eyebrows, a very good one. Obviously eyelashes. And again, I won't be very accurate with this because I'll use a blending uh, option uh, where it will remove any values that are lighter underneath. So again, it's, it's not a case of having to make very accurate selections. Uh, we can really quickly do the edits and then use the tools in Photoshop to make our lives a lot easier. Just fixing up the eyebrow again just to make it a smooth line there. Okay, so you can see it's really a little bit of overkill at the moment on the eyes, but we'll blend that a lot more naturally in a second. And just picking the darker areas of the hair just gives a little bit more contrast in the image at the end. Okay, just looking over any other areas, so there's a little bit more shape to, uh, to the breast area. So again, you can see how much of an impact just with uh, using shadows will really make on a person. You need to keep this in mind too when shooting and how you set up your lights so uh, you can really change the look of someone. Uh, you can do things like taking pounds off of someone just by lighting it correctly. Obviously for this person we need to do that. Just creating a little bit of a longer look there in some of the muscles. So on the bikini top there, we can give it a lot more curve, a lot more dimension. Just by painting some of those darker areas. Uh, just changing my darken layer there to luminosity as well. Right, so now going over the light. So as you can see down the leg there, there's a, a light that's really reflecting off that uh, high point of the, the curve on the leg. So just really trying to define that a little bit more. Gives it a little bit more dimension, uh, three-dimensional aspect. Back leg there as well, on the back of the calves. And we'll actually go around on the uh, bikini bottoms there as well, make sure you get all of that. Look a little bit grey, so I'll probably go back and remove a lot of that. And just lighten up the collarbone there, and down the neck is a good spot as well. And I often do down uh, on the cheekbone there, uh, and also down the nose, um, and a little bit on the, the forehead there, just where the light is, is hitting it. So you can see with the light and layer, what effect it does. So I'll swap to black here. So this is where I, I didn't like the, 
started looking a little bit grey, so I've removed a bit of that. Okay, and really up the the flow here on the board, uh, just to darken it, give the board a little bit more impact. So it's, I'm doing a dodge and burn on the actual figure now that's on the board. So same as what we're doing for the model, I'm doing that on the board to give it some a little bit more contrast and effect. Really bring out some of those details. It's an amazing board by the guys from Artisian, I believe it is, uh, on the Gold Coast. So they were painting this board uh, while we are at the convention, so we were lucky enough to use it in our photo shoot. correctly and if you don't like the look of something um, I often will walk away from my images and come back uh, an hour or even a couple of days later and you look at the image and you'll just think oh no that something there doesn't look right and uh, so you can go quickly into your layers and find out what you uh, do and don't like about it and, and easily change it you don't have to start from scratch so just here I've applied a new layer on top of everything this is going to be a highlight, it really sort of emphasises the specular light um, that is bouncing onto the subject. So this one's just very, very rough. As you can see, I'm just painting with white, straight over where those highlights are on her body. So, um, and don't worry, it's not going to look like this. It's, uh, we're going to actually come back and really blend this in. Only going to make this appear where the underlying layer of the image is lighter. So we'll actually change this to a soft light uh, layer. Uh, just after we do a little bit of bridge on the nose and the forehead, a little bit on the cheeks, just to give it a little bit of impact. So this is where we've changed the soft light. So that's made a big difference already, but double click on the, the, on the right hand side there and as you can see I'm using the sliders so where the image is darker underneath I want that to um, basically fade in. And then I'll bring the opacity right down just to make it blend a little bit better. So just a before and after of that you can see it really gives a little bit of a pop to the image. starting to get to the end of the image now so I'm just going to for the client they wanted a little bit more of a sort of surfier look so I've done a levels adjustment here and I've selected the blue layer so as you can see I bring a bit more blue into the darks into the shadows I should say and uh, then I'll just bring in the slider on the uh, right hand side there where the lights are that brings in some yellow so obviously blue and yellow are opposites in the uh, color space so hence why this works with the levels adjustment on the blue channel selected so just make sure that's labeled nicely as well and there we go that's really uh, what I do in the edits of my photos so uh, just going to merge a couple of things together there and we'll do a just change. Oh, we're going to do a, an overall um, sharpen. So I've just done a uh, merge visible layers into a new layer and just change the soft light and now applying a high pass filter. So you just want it around about 1.5 I like because that's really starting to show some of the edge details and you won't see it in this video but um, that's just an overall sharpen that I do for the image obviously for digital images I need a little bit of sharpening okay and that's basically it so uh, just group everything together now just so we can see a before and after so you can go scroll right down, select all the layers, hold down shift. Oh sorry, I'll just quickly check to make sure we have completed everything that we wanted to on this image. So this is the fixes layer that I did at the very beginning. 
So we went through, we've removed all the spots, removed the soft boxes, all the markings on the, um, on the backdrop. Now select all those layers, Command G, just a group, and then you can easily just hit the visibility icon there just to see what changes you have made. So this is where you really do see a big impact from that original image to your final image. So very intricate and small details uh, that we change, but a big difference as you can tell. Thanks very much for watching.